Hey, are you battling with your college debt? Are you struggling to close new patients or just get them in the door? Our system is designed to create weight loss and nutritional clients into raving chiropractic fans. This program can easily increase or possibly double your income. So get ready and become the chiropractic authority. Hey, hey, welcome everybody to the Chiropractic Authority. This is Dr. Kyle Muir. And this is T Bone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is Dr. Aaron Tresser. We got an incredible show. Dr. Paul Grew, DC on fire. We love that, man. I like I remember hearing from like Sega Foods and those guys. Start a fire, be on fire, and they'll come to watch you burn. So Dr. Paul, he graduated from Palmer 2003, has two kids, he's married, uh, has a lot to talk about about authority-based marketing, which I think we're struggling hard with in our, in our profession. But uh, in 2011, Dr. Paul was getting his private pilot license, and boom, something happened. So Dr. Paul, welcome aboard. Gentlemen, thanks for having me. You <laughs> I'm bet, excited man. to be here. We like to have fun. So why don't you just introduce yourself, tell a little bit about you, your background, and what happened in 2011. Sure. I, uh, I took a circuitous route into chiropractic. Actually, I was, a, I was a paramedic long before I was a chiropractor. Wanted nothing to do with chiropractors until I injured myself. And of course, like so many people, nothing else was working. I ended up in a chiropractor's office and uh, changed my way of thinking completely. And uh, uh, I went from there. I went into a, I did a nursing degree. And then from nursing, I, I knew about halfway through nursing, I'm like, there is no way I'm going to spend my life in this model of, of healthcare. Uh, I'm going to be a chiropractor. And I uh, went to Palmer, like you said, graduated in 03. And uh, just to pick up where you left off, I, in, in 2011, I was getting my pilot's license. And I had the airplane for about an hour and a half. It was uh, one of those days where I had nothing else but flying on my agenda, no honeydew list. And uh, it was one of those perfect spring mornings. I went flying, and about 10 minutes into the flight, 10, 12 minutes into the flight, I started to feel really horrible. And um, I decided to scrap the flight. I landed, popped the canopy, took my headset off. And when I took my headset off, I realized I was deaf on one side. And 48 hours later, I'm lying flat on my back at a local hospital here in Ottawa. And uh, I was incoherent. I was combative out of my mind. It was my wife had been summoned to the hospital, and uh, she was being told to prepare for the worst because... I had bacterial meningitis. I was not responding to antibiotics. They had me on something called um, vancomycin, which was and continues to be the most powerful antibiotic that we have in our repository right now. I was not responding to it. My kidneys were shutting down. My heart was erratic. I was becoming paralyzed, blind, deaf. And uh, they gave me a chance of survival of less than 10%. Wow. wow. And uh, turns out that less than 10% is all you need. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I survived that by God's grace. And um, here we are, 2017. That's awesome. awesome. You know, and our, I remember hearing a song in, in church years ago. And my, I have five kids when they were little. God's bigger than the boogeyman. <laughs> and I always yes. laugh. I think, well, God's bigger than anything. You know, he can turn this around. And obviously, your plan wasn't up yet. You're here to serve. You're here to turn turn the power on in our lives and chiropractors so uh, we're glad uh, we're glad you are yeah so for the listeners who don't know can you tell us a little bit about this dc on fire and what that's all about yeah dc on fire started out uh, i'm gonna say two years after i recovered from meningitis roughly and uh, that was born out of this uh, this notion that i that I came to understand that so many of us, when we, you know, when you're in school, you're surrounded by colleagues, you're surrounded by teachers, but when you get into practice, like you're on an island, you're by yourself, or you feel like you are. Mm -hmm. And that uh, I remember looking at chiropractors who I saw that were just slaying it out there, and thinking, "Wow, what is it that they have that I don't have?" And I realized that really the only ingredient that they have that I don't have is the willingness to execute and take action. And, you know, that, that was a tough lesson for me to learn. But what I wanted to do with DC on Fire originally was interview chiropractors who are just doing awesome in, in practice, but then having them show how, you know, how they started off as a struggle. But uh, to be very frank, um, I, I, I wasn't very good at keeping my, my content current. I let the, and the, the podcast start to overtake all of my attention and practice enough that my practice started to dwindle. And so when uh, DC on Fire was resurrected, 
what I started doing was documenting everything that I was doing to rebuild my practice back to a level that it should be at to serve my, you know, to make a dent in my city. Awesome. And that's what it's been for the last several episodes. Yep, that's that's DC on fire. That's cool. And what do you think? I mean, you're talking about chiropractors on an island. <clears throat> I felt like this for a while. And it's funny is I, uh, I try to get around chiropractors. I mean, I don't have a lot of friends because you just don't associate with uh, unlike-minded people. That's right. Um, so, so we feel on an island. But even chiropractors, you know, I go and I talk to chiropractors and they're so out of the game. They're so um, far removed from chiropractic. I just don't even get involved there. So what do you think these challenges are with, with chiropractors? They're on an island. They feel um, maybe insecure. They feel on their own. They're trying to succeed. Where are you seeing the challenges in chiropractic or health care you know, system? I, I, you know, I, I think the, the, the biggest thing that impedes chiropractors, you know, I've, I've said this more than once, is this obsession that we have about what other people think of us. Mm-hmm. Or what will they think of us if we if we do this or don't do that? And uh, I remember sitting across from uh, – I was doing a knee-to-knee consultation. And I remember this woman who was looking at me. She was well-heeled, very educated. Uh, she, her life was a shambles because of how her health uh, was abandoning her. Her body was – you know, it seemed to be abandoning her. And she looked at me with this look on her face. And without saying it, she was saying it with her eyes. She was saying – you know, please help me. And I realized in that moment, if this was a watershed moment for me, I realized in that moment that we spend an enormous amount of time worried about what other people think of us. And the reality is that the patient who's sitting across from us, they all they care is what we think of them. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and, and I think if we could actually own it and realize, you know what, I've been to school, I've done hundreds of exams, I've paid my dues, I'm a doctor, you know. I'm not a second-rate doctor. I'm not a. I'm not anything. Uh, there's there's no such thing as a real doctor compared to what we do. I'm it. I'm. They're here because they know, or they they're hoping that I can do something for them. And if everybody who's listening can just really embody that, that you you have what it takes to do what you got to do, and not give a crap what other people think of you, I think I think we could really transform this profession. I'm a hundred percent on board with that. Um... You know, we all have struggles with that, too, every single day. You know, you wake up, you go to talk to somebody, and someone's at the store talking about their neck pain or their back pain. I can't tell me how many times I go to the grocery store and, you know, just I, it would never happen any other time. I'm walking, and then all of a sudden out of the corner of my ear, I, I hear someone talking about their headaches, and they're taking, you know, Advil and leave, and I'm like, all right, should I walk over there and talk to them and say, hey, listen, you don't know who I am, <laughs> but um, I could definitely help you with that. Or... Is it like, all right, I don't want to go over there and say anything because I don't want to seem like I'm this weirdo guy who just like is eavesdropping on your conversation. But at the same time, it's like, what are the odds if it is if it is just random? What are the odds that this particular person at this particular time when I'm there, chiropractor that can help them is talking about this? So then I just go up there and whether they think I'm an idiot or not, I just tell them anyways and, you know, go from there. And I think that I think that's the big thing is like we have to realize that Things just don't happen by accident. It's not just circumstance that this person is talking about this at this particular time. You know, you got to go seize the moment. That's like your innate telling you, like, all right, dude, like, let's go take care of this. You yep. know, so I, I love that. I, I mean, this leads into what I, I, I never thought that doing DC on fire, I'd start to get well known for helping chiropractors market their stuff online. But this is a, you're, you've, you've touched, you've touched the nerve there. How would, how is it that we can, uh, can we approach people online in a similar ways that we would approach them in public? Mm-hmm. And, and I, I know you wanted me to touch about touch on authority based marketing. Yep. And I think one of the rabbit holes that chiropractors are going down right now, and it's it's actually poisoning the well, in my opinion. And that is that we we're not fully understanding the mindset of a prospect uh, when they're online. So, for example, if if you are um, if you are a go- if you're if you have a prospect who's on Google or if they're on YouTube, they have a mindset where they're seeking a solution. They're, if somebody's on Google and they're looking up stuff about back pain, it is perfectly natural for the first time they come across you guys 
uh, or weight loss. Like that's what you you guys are. That's one of the the one of the fish you one of the uh, what the the baits you have in the water, right? right yeah. yep. So if they're if they're looking for weight loss, something about weight loss, it would not feel odd at all if they're on Google to look something up and find something from you that says, hey. We've got this thing in our office. We have a promotion. It's a discounted service. Come, come on in. There's nothing weird about that. Right. However, however, in a social situation, if you walked up to that lady <laughs> at at the grocery store mm-hmm. who who has never heard you, she's chatting with her friend, being social, and the first words out of your mouth, and I know that's not how you do this. Right. <laughs> the, the the first words out of your mouth was saying, "Hey." We got a promotion in our office for twenty seven dollars for a new visit. It would seem it would be intrusive. You know, she you would see her back up. It would be weird. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? You would say hello. You'd you say, you know, I, I overheard you. I, you know, and you could you might ask a couple of questions. It would be some rapport building. And then somewhere at the end of that conversation you might invite her to your office. Right. But there's a there's a process. Right. right? Yep. Uh, whereas on social media right now, what we've got are doctors who are spending an enormous amount of money doing what I what is what is really direct response marketing in a social environment. It's in the wrong place. So when you're on Facebook, for example, that's where everybody's at, right? right. Everybody's on Facebook. Facebook's got all the data. You can target like crazy on Facebook. So when you're on Facebook, the last thing you're expecting to see, because it's not in your mindset, you're not there shopping. You're there being social. The last thing you expect to see is some kind of an ad offering a twenty-seven dollar exam. It's weird. Yeah. And I think it turns a lot of people mm. off. Yeah, I think you're. I think you're spot on with that. Yeah. I know <clears throat> there's a lot a, of the docs who are doing that. Right, and there's a lot of confusion. I, I think the time. I mean, we put in. It's there's education. There's webinars. We're doing our yep. patients, and <clears throat> we're doing reports, and we're doing workshops. And then we try to throw an ad on Facebook, mm-hmm. and I'm right there with everyone. You know, with oh, them, yeah. we you know we spend a lot of time. We're we're making click funnels and and making our website look better and changing it in the mix of seeing a lot of patients a week, new patients, new exams, yep. reports, family, my farm, all this other stuff. And I think that comes last, and a lot of times. And we don't get new patients. We're like, <laughs> what, what the heck? Yeah. And, and that's why, you know, the, one of the things we do with weight loss, um, and maybe you can, you can elaborate on, you know, just marketing and how we should be marketing whatever we're doing. Because yep. when we do weight loss, um, I know a lot of guys are just jumping ship and just doing weight loss because it's easy. And, but they're not teaching their chiropractic, which drives us nuts. And that's one of the passions we have to do our thing is they need to understand chiropractic. They need to understand the principle behind healing is the nerve system, period. It's not weight loss, not supplements, exercise, meditation, or sleep. Yeah. That's all secondary. So, you know, we have a plan to get them in, but once they come in, it's all one system. That's why we love doing it. But I don't, it, it, my, my statement to a lot of docs are it doesn't matter how you get them in, get them in. There, any way you get them in, if you can get them in, and then you have a, pr- a practice that can actually teach them about their what they want, and then give them what they need. Integrate chiropractic; it, it's a win for every everyone. But they want to lose weight because they think it's going to solve the world. They want to get rid of a headache because they think it's going to solve the world. They don't want chiropractic. So you know, what do what do you say to docs out there? We're trying to market. We're trying to implement these things, whether it's headaches, weight loss. Um, is there a, is there a, an easier way to do just chiropractic? You know, what, what is your, your process through this? How, how can you help us? Okay. So it's, it's, it's actually a very, very simple process. You, ultimately what you want to be is an expert. So right now my best performing, well, I'll, I'll use what you're doing as an example. I, actually, I'll start with mine. The, cause I know it better right now with my best performing video that I have online is a video where I'm just teaching some some basic stretches and strengthening moves to help people with their you know low back and neck pain. And the reason the reason I did that is because I don't want to teach a table side. Originally, that video was intended to go through a drip of emails that I send my patients once they start care, right? Because I don't want to spend I don't have time to spend right. table side, and I don't enjoy doing it. Yeah. Right. I think it's important, but I I don't want to talk about you know doing this exercise table side. You know, it's just not what I want to do. And so I put it up on social media. It got all kinds of traction. I changed the headline. And since 
I'm going to say that I'm going to say in the last six months, that one video alone has been viewed almost 200,000 times and it's been shared almost 2000 times. Wow. And that's just in my marketplace. <laughs> so, wow. um, what that, what has happened is that all the people, I found this very interesting when people come in as a new patient and they will cite, they'll say, how did you find us? Facebook. What is it that you saw on Facebook about me? They said, I saw that video with you and your wife. You were teaching how to do exercises and stretches for the low back. And then I'll, and I'll refer to something that was late in the video. It's a seven minute long video, which is an eternity on Facebook. Yeah. Zero percent of these people that have come in as a new patient have seen the whole video. Zero. <laughs> so what has happened is that in the first few seconds of that video, they were like, that guy's an expert. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then I suspect what they're doing is they're saving the video. You know, you know now you can save stuff on oh, Facebook yeah. to, to look at it later. And so I'll ask them again, so when did you see the video? Oh, I saw it like three months ago. And in that time, I'll say, well, did you see the video that I did of this and of that? Oh, and they're like, oh, yeah, I saw, I've seen everything you've done. They've been to my website. They saw all the other Facebook stuff. Mm -hmm. They saw my reviews. Ultimately, it was the Facebook that they will cite as the reason for coming in. But they will have taken a very – there's a holistic sort of very uh, – they cast a – there was a large net that caught them. And it was multiple touch points where eventually they said, this is the guy. And they came in. They never saw an ad. They never saw an offer. There was no discounted service. And I'm not against discounting services per se. Because what I do know, what Facebook allows you to do, and this is what's most exciting about doing this method. Honestly, it's so powerful. So imagine this person that you saw at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. let's, let's say the conversation never got around in a natural way for you to invite her to your office. But lo and behold, a day later you see her at the bank and she sees you. And you chat with her again, but then she gets distracted and she has to go and you know, oh, you never, you, yeah. couldn't, you, couldn't, you couldn't make the offer. But then you see her at the car wash three days later yep. and she sees you again. And this time you're like a long lost friend, a rapport has been built and you'll say, you know what, I've been thinking about you. You really should come into my office. I think I can help. And you, and you can even say, we even have a promotion going on right now. Instead of 180 bucks, it's 60 bucks or whatever, whatever. Yeah. It's not going to come off as weird. It's not going to come off as desperate. It's going to come off as something natural and really kind of you to do that. Yeah. So it's multiple touch points and Facebook allows you to do that. Mm. That's beautiful. That's an awesome like imagery with like you could easily see that when you know when you just think about Facebook, most of us wouldn't put it the same way and eloquently as you just did with you know being able to see this person in multiple places over multiple different times without you really having to go anywhere since it's on Facebook right. and they're right there. Uh, I think um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you know being on Facebook, seeing these different ads, I feel like a lot of chiropractors who do put ads in here. Let's say they put an ad for a, you know, a discounted initial visit. Maybe they have massage. Maybe they have nutrition. Whatever it is, you know, they put a discounted thing on there, and they're just hoping that someone's going to be like, you know, that's a great deal. I'm going to jump on. You know, just just because we know what the power of chiropractic is, that doesn't mean that the other people who are on Facebook that you're targeting have any clue of what it is, and they don't know that that's a great deal. But here we are hoping and praying like, oh, please, you know, someone's got to see this. This is amazing. Well, they're all going to come in. And then here you go two weeks later and there's not a single person comes in for it. Yeah. Um, so I think in my opinion, anyways, I try and I try and see like outside of chiropractic. If someone was marketing to me, like I like to work out. So if I like to work out, what do I want to see first? Well, I want to see, like you said, someone be the authority. If I see a a guy or a girl, it doesn't matter, who has a video of here are some tips on on these exercises to do instead of doing this. I'd be like, oh, okay, maybe I'd save that, like you said, for later, and then when I get some more time, yep. watch it again. And then after I watch a few videos of them or you know, read some information about them, then I'm like, all right, like what else do they have to offer? Is that kind of how it works? That's 100% how it works. Awesome. Because every time you would come, if somebody, if you guys were out there doing uh, Facebook videos, if you guys were out there, I would recommend, I mean, you could do the quick the quick fix, but I heard Sean Dill say this, and I got to give him credit. And he's the one who changed the way I do my Facebook marketing. And he said, 
that his, he suspected that we are still seeing 5% of the population because we are using the same marketing techniques that appeal to 5% of the population. Yeah. Exactly. What about becoming, you know, what about becoming the expert? And that would be, and no, no ask at the end of the video. The only ask would be, hey, share this if you find it valuable. That's what I do at the end of all my videos. Huh. Share it. If you found this valuable, share it on your timeline. Yeah. Um, so the alternative for us now is to not be too eager. If you need a surge, do whatever you got to do to get a surge in your patients. Right. Okay. But if you want to, if you really want to leverage your time, your effort, your talent, your resources to steward everything that you've got, then I would suggest put yourself in, prepare some kind of a teaching point on weight loss or whatever it is that you really want to do, uh, and uh, come up with a really good headline for it and test it. Put it on Facebook. Put a little bit of money behind it, target it just around your neighborhood, and see does it gain traction. Mm -hmm. This is what traction is. Traction equals you want at least one share for every 10 likes. Okay. At, that's how you know you might have something. Personally, I'm not happy with that at all. I like it <laughs> to be reversed. I like it to be reversed. If I've got twice as many shares as I do have likes, then I know I've got, I've got a hot piece of content. Right. And I, then what I'll do is I'll scale. I'll put more and more money behind it, and then I'll watch that social proof grow. And and all you've got now is your it's Facebook. Now this is what's exciting, guys. Listen to this. Facebook is now paying attention to who is watching your video. And not only that, but right now this video that's been seen almost two hundred thousand times, probably over two hundred now. Um, I can go to it and say I want to make an audience, a custom audience out of those people that have watched fifty percent of that video at least, or ninety five percent of that video at least. And they will take that hundred or two hundred thousand and boil it down to four thousand, hmm. and then to those four thousand people, boom! I can send because uh, clearly somebody's watching ninety-five percent of a seven-minute video on Facebook. They want what I got. Oh yeah, they're interested for sure. They're totally interested. Ooh. So to them, I would send them a video that says, "Hey, we've got a thing on going in our office." Sweet. Right. To people have only seen ten percent. <clears throat> excuse me, 10% of the video, I would send them another piece of content that would be, you know, here's how to get out of bed when you've got a hot disc so you don't hurt yourself again. That was That's another video I made that, that went viral as well. Or here's a video about um, what we pay in uh, malpractice insurance. Maybe you guys have seen that one. That went viral in chiro chiropractic land. Yeah, I watched um, that one. You've seen that one? Okay. Yep. So uh, I would send them that one. So they're, I'm creating multiple touch points and so the no like and trust factor is slowly growing and then to those people, I can eventually, if they were to see an offer from me, it wouldn't be weird. And it's yeah. a done deal. They, right. they show up, they, sorry guys, they show up and it is, it's, it's over. They're, they're, they show up, ready to go. Wow. So, Paul, when you test this, <clears throat> so you, you, let's yep. say somebody makes a video, yep. they get a nice heading, and they yep. test it. How much would they have to spend or the market that they would have to hit to see that it's working or not. Okay, so regardless of how many calls you get, if you're getting if you're getting twice as many likes, uh, sorry, if you're getting twice as many shares as you are likes, like it's getting shared a lot, mm -hmm. put money put money behind it. Okay. Okay. So you okay. so they just post it on their own personal site or their business yep. site. Yep. Post it out, see what happens. They're yep. getting a bunch of shares, then they yep. know they're interested. Let's let's put money behind it. Promote it. Well, you to... can. You, sorry, you'll have to put money behind it from the get go. You okay. got to pay to play with Facebook. There's okay. no way around that. Right. So you put a bit of money behind it. Maybe you know thirty bucks. Okay. See what happens. If it starts to get shared for thirty bucks, and you know you got ten likes and you got twenty shares, that so you want to scale that. I I no hesitation. I'll put ten twenty dollars a day behind that. Mm -hmm. So what is that? That's that's anywhere between three and six hundred dollars for a month. Are you yes, kidding yeah. me? Yeah. Right. Where else are you going to reach that many people? Thousands of people for pennies, for six hundred bucks. What is a what is a screening cost these days to go do a screening? Yeah. When you can, when you start with a screening fee, staff, you're not going to come in touch with thousands of people. Yep. And then on top of that, you won't know even if you get leads from screening, you wouldn't know the same type of information from the leads that you're getting for how how interested they are based on how long they're listening to the video or they're watching the video and so forth. That's you awesome. Got it. Yeah. So after you after you get the leads, after you or after you do the video and you're getting yep. this promoted in the community, yep. 
you attract, you get their lead by email and then put them in an email list? Or not even, not even um, that. I mean, email, growing an email list, it's, it's going to be a lot easier for you, Dr. T-Bone. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, man. It you gross. got it. See, it's a lot easier. I have found this is just my experience. Okay, uh, I can I can get emails from other chiropractors, no problem. You know, I create some kind of a lead magnet, put it up on my uh, on my show notes page for you know, if I were to offer right now a video on how to create a custom audience mm -hmm. in Facebook to do what I just described, and I'd say I'll I'll do the tutorial video for free. Here it is. Name and email address. I'll get boom, 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 boom. All kinds of email addresses, mm -hmm. uh, hundreds of email addresses. No issue. From the general public, it is like King Tut's tomb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there, it, I, I have never been able to be re, not near as good anyway at getting uh, emails from uh, from from patients. I have a lead magnet on my website. It does collect some emails every month. Uh, and then there's a sequence that they go through and, you know, it, but it, it, it doesn't pull nearly the same way as the aggregate that Facebook creates for you. And I realize that's Facebook that owns it and they can shut you down tomorrow. So that is the weak spot. That's the Achilles heel. Right. Um, so as, as an aside, I would say make sure before you do any ads, read the guidelines on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. So you, you're just making a presence, and because they like you and start sharing, now they're starting to follow. Now they're going to go to your website. They're yep. going to start checking you out. So yep. eventually they're going to start weeding their way into your office just because of your presence. You're not so uh, focused on trying to get a lead and then, boom, starting to send out you know 20 emails over the next month. No. You're just playing it cool, sitting back, promoting. They like it. Hey, Let's share it to the community. Yep. Do a few more posts. They don't like. They don't like. When they like it, you share another one. That's you know, cool. uh, and email. Yeah, that's exactly right. E getting an email from from the general public is not nearly as easy as it used to be. People guard their email like their right. children. Right. Right. And mm -hmm. so you have to prove your worth before they're going to trust you with their email. And if they do give an email early in the process, it's their junk email. 90% yeah. of the time, I'm telling you, it's something that's going to go into the spam folder. They're not even going to look at it. So uh, I will – so if I do if, – when, how do I want to say this? My first three or four points of contact many times are – I have no ask. I don't ask them for an email. I let Facebook aggregate and identify those people. Mm -hmm. And I will market to them directly. I, they're identified by Facebook. I don't have access to that data. Facebook has it. But I can say, hey, these people, send them this video, and, and Facebook will do that for me. Um, now, if at some point I want to do um, some kind of an offer to someone who has had multiple points of contact with me, that the, I may structure that offer through Facebook as a lead gen ad where I do actually get their email. But I've earned their email by then. Yeah. I've earned it. Wow. I've earned it. Right. They've seen me three or four times. And so now they're going to give me their email. And then they go through a sequence. And in fact, I do a bigger ask. If they've had three or four points of contact with me or if they've watched 95% of a long video of mine, I know they're a hot lead. Not only will I ask for their name and email, I ask for their phone number. <laughs> and they give and they give it. Sweet. But I've earned it. Yeah. Yep. That's true. Do you, do you find other ways, like once you're starting to promote this and you see it's they're watching you, like things like webinars or... Um, I was just or thinking any other social media like yeah. you know Instagram, Snapchat, any of that stuff. Do you use any of that or is it more primarily just Facebook stuff? Or even workshops in the yeah. office. There's a lot of docs doing dinner oh, workshops yeah. or workshops. Yeah. Are there yeah. any any thing that seem to be working better for for docs? So I think um, Instagram I think is where the as Facebook fades away, and it will eventually, or it'll become prohibitively expensive. Right. Big big business in in North America has, are just starting to catch on that they've got cheap cheap advertising at their doorstep, and they're not using it. So eventually, I hate to say this, but I suspect we're gonna get we're gonna get booted because the prices are gonna get ridiculous. Right. Because because Coca Cola is gonna be willing to spend whatever it takes to get in front. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um, I think as Facebook fades. The next social media, this is just my, I'm just prognosticating, will be Instagram. Mm. I think that's where the millennials are hanging out. Right. Uh, I, I'm not an expert in Instagram by any chance. So that would be something worth dabbling in and starting to grow um, a, a following. 
yeah. uh, because I, I think that'll be the next uh, the, the next sort of Facebook for us. Now you asked me about uh, workshops in the office. Facebook is a great way uh, to run a you know if you wanted to run some kind of an introductory workshop on weight loss in your office, Facebook is a great way to drive traffic to an Eventbrite page. Okay. You know you uh, you start with some teachable content. Right, you you can yeah same similar process right the the process can be you know put out some information make it available make your Facebook page you know when they click video that there's like eight or nine videos there with that have that have been shared they've been liked people have you know have engaged with it's good con good uh, good content and um, you can easily then put out an ad for an event hmm. uh, drive it to an event right page and you're on a Tuesday night we're having this workshop. It's free. We're going to cover the six best ways to lose X in Y amount of time without Z. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. There's a that's a formula for a headline, right? X ways mm -hmm. to to do this in Y amount of time uh, without having to Z. Right. Uh, okay. That's a great way to start an ad and you know bring them in and then you know then you got to know how to close when they're in your yeah. office. Awesome. We're going to have to charge all the people listening right now for this. <laughs> <laughs> We'll send you. <laughs> you know, we're we'll going to send, send my PayPal link. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Paul is just blowing us away with all this freaking unbelievable content. This is great. I yeah, mean, and, I, and I've, I've tried to study marketing. I've tried, you know, I'm involved in click funnels, gone to seminars. I dabble in it because I just, I'm a chiropractor. I'm a dad. Right. I have a farm. And then I try to, to market. And I'm very right. passionate. So my passion uh, draws business in just that bit. It's a tough world. I think I think chiropractors are not only confused um, which way to go, but they're trying things and they just don't get enough um, enough traction, like you said, to say, "Hey, this is something that's working. Let's keep doing it." We dabble in a little bit here and there, here and there, and then nothing happens. And I think yep. that's why a lot of people are jumping out of chiropractic because it's it's a hard nut to crack. They're trying to promote it or trying to say, I'm a chiropractor. And people are like, I don't give a crap that you're a chiropractor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a problem. How are you going to help me? Mm -hmm. we got to get them in. And if we can attract them in in any way, we got to get attention. And if we can't get attention, they're not going to know who we are and come into the office. Yep. So what I'd like to do now is kind of take from what we've gone, and I always like to ask all of our guests this. Um, so Dr. Paul with... With having two kids and a wife and a practice and DC on fire and all the other stuff that you have going on, how do you get on purpose and stay focused every single day to be able to get through this? Do you have like a morning ritual or do you have anything that's like, all right, I do this and this gets me ready to rock and roll? I learned about, well, let's be, let me back up, morning ritual. Morning ritual, you guys are no stranger to this. I have what I call morning time. And morning time is I get up before my kids get up, before my wife gets up. Because as you know, if, you're, if your kids are up at the same time as you, <laughs> it's over. There's no solitude. There's no, re there, there's no time to be ready. And I, I spend some time in prayer. I, read, I always read from the book. Uh, I have to say not every morning, but if I can't, if I can't get my eyes – in scripture, then I'll listen to some worship music as I'm doing something else. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll usually, I've become fascinated with influence and marketing. I never saw that coming in a million worlds. <laughs> I'll, transi I'll transition to that, um, put some good food in my body. And one of the things, I make sure that I'm never, that I'm not rushing. The mm -hmm. second I'm rushing to do, go from A to B to C to D to E, and I've got oh, all this stuff going on, I'm automatically in a fight or flight mode. My creativity goes out the window and it takes me forever to be the creative that I need to be on that day. I don't know if that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. And so one of the things, actually, a, a good friend of mine, uh, Greg Zoldi, he's probably not listening to this, but um, uh, he, uh, he he's the one who taught me about block time. You know, I block off time and I realize, I, you know, instead of me trying to do everything, you know, today, I'm like, no, I have that scheduled. It's Wednesday. I've got an hour and a half just dedicated Towards I'm doing three interviews, or I'm doing I, I gotta re, I gotta you know bang out a script for two different videos, and and that's when I'm gonna do it. And I don't even I leave it aside. I don't touch it. Gotcha. And that's what allows me. That's what allows me to to remain effective in the time that I've got. And the last thing is I keep the main thing the main thing. So I love doing DC on fire. I do. It is not the main thing. Mm -hmm. 
I love chiropractors. I want to encourage them. I want to help them. I have this vision that if we did all this, if, if, uh, if, we, if we all did this authority-based marketing, we'd be marketing to the 95%. I really believe that if all of, did, all of us did this, put maybe 150 bucks a month behind some simple Facebook ads, we could literally transform the public perception. But as much as that's true, this is not the main thing. Right. The main thing is the main thing, and that's what's in front of me and behind that door behind me right there. That's a that's a room full of patients, and I got a family at home. I got to keep that in mind because if I don't, I get lost. Yep. Awesome. That's, I love it. That's great. And as as we're kind of pulling to the end here, I have another question yep. for you. Um, yep. And I just I came up with this the other day. I thought this is an interesting question. If your license or the chiropractic license was taken away from all of us. Ooh. Okay. What would you do? If our license was, if I couldn't be a chiropractor? Yeah, let's or just, just well, say you couldn't be one out. legally. <laughs> we'll say that. Let, let's just say chiropractic was illegal at this point. Boom. Nat, across the world. What would you do? Man, I would, I, I would, I would buy as much Facebook time and, and YouTube. I'd go nuts on YouTube. I would try and, uh, I would try to lead a revolution. I would be banding with guys like you, Ed Osborne, Dan Bay. I would get I would get as many influencers as we could pool our refunds, or pool our funds, and start a revolution to change the hearts and minds of the public. But we can do that before this happens. Heck yeah, that's cool. That's beautiful. Like that. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, Paul, what um, resources can our listeners go to to get more information about you? Um, obviously, DC on fire, so they can start listening to that. Where can they find you? DC on Fire really is the best place to go and get more of a feel of who I am. Spell the way it sounds, dconfire.com. If you've got a specific question you want to ask me, uh, go to DC. Uh, it's paul at dconfire.com. On every show note, uh, on every show that I do, I have show notes pages. Most of them I have like a bonus uh, download. And lately it's been focused a lot on uh, – on online marketing, but there's uh, there's been other episodes on money management and uh, how I do a day one, day two. You know, it's a it's a it's a number of things, but uh, there's lots of resources on there. I think uh, I think people really like it. Beautiful. Any uh, last advice, last words for our listeners? Words here? of wisdom. <laughs> okay, you can edit this. Is this live or is can you can you edit this out if you need to? <laughs> I mean, it's, we can we edit, can it edit if we it, want. We're not editing. We're all right, right so here, here's, brother. <laughs> all right, so here I, I sent you the picture of my social media or my marketing philosophy in mm. two sentences. Yep, yep, I love it. Number one, be an expert. Number two, don't be a douchebag. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> I That's think perfect. we can say that. <laughs> and and I think I think if that alone. That could change the way you do your marketing. That could change the way you talk to your patients. That could change the way you do day one, day two. That could change everything. Like just be an expert. Own it. Yep. Beautiful. Yeah. And and we are experts. You know, we tell people we, you know, the chiropractic authority. We are the authority. There's no one better than the authority of health and healing than us. We have to get our head wrapped around it, believe yeah. it, and, yeah. and go out and kill it, man. Yeah. So this was awesome. I, I, I appreciate you, Dr. Paul, being on. I'm sure the listeners gained so much. Oh, yeah. And you know where to go. You know, talk to, give give Dr. Paul a shout out. Get on these podcasts, guys. If you're not downloading podcasts, putting it in your head when you work out, r- ride in your car, you know, in the morning time, do it coming home. Get it in your ears, in your head, because we need to support each other. And we need to learn how to change this world. And you're doing it. You're doing a killer job. We appreciate learning this as well and taking our game to the next level. Yeah, absolutely. We loved having you on the show. I know our listeners got tremendous value, tremendous content. I know I learned a bunch just talking to you. So we appreciate it, Dr. Paul. No um, problem. I'll be watching to see what you're doing on Facebook now for the next couple of months. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. So until next time, guys, this is Dr. Kyle Muir. And Dr. Aaron Tressler. A little T-bone. T-bone. <laughs> and we are the <laughs> Chiropractic Authority. For more information about the Chiropractic Authority, run on over to thechiropracticauthority.com where you can start training today on our free videos, free training material, webinars, PowerPoints, our innate life systems, coaching, and much, much more. This information will blow you away. 
So thanks for listening, and until next time, this is Aaron. And this is Kyle. We are the Chiropractic Chiropractic Authority. Authority.